you know, you know. We are live in the black people-ish. I'm just holding on for a second. See what's going on. Hey, everybody. Okay, here we go. This week in black people shit, food for the soul, traditional African-American cooking. I'm your host, Christy Ferris. As many of you prepare for tomorrow's Thanksgiving celebration, we as black people tend to celebrate with traditional black. I just realized that this whole time I'm doing the thing and y'all probably can't even hear me. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I forgot to put my microphone up to you. All right, I'm going to start this one more time, everybody who's out there. Let's try it again. All right. This week in Black People Shit, food for the soul, traditional African-American cooking. I'm your host, Christy Ferris. As many of you prepare for tomorrow's Thanksgiving celebration, we as Black people tend to celebrate with traditional Black food like collard greens, mac and cheese. But oftentimes, we don't know the history from which they originated. Because of slavery and our history in this country, the food we love are usually a hodgepodge of several different cultures, not of our own. Today, I have with me actress and creator of Louisiana Girl Culinary, Denise Boutte, to discuss the, or the origins of some of her favorite food. As always with me, actress and wine enthusiast, Janora McDuffie, and writer and part-time food critic, Abdul Majid. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share today's episode. And if you'd like to join in on the conversation, just click the link in the chat because we love to hear from you. Hey! hey. What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, yeah, happy to be here. With that introduction, I was trying to be cool and go with the theme with the wine and food yourself. I didn't realize I had a hole in my lip first. Ah, uh, hilarious. I didn't realize I didn't have my mic. I was like, uh, where's my mic? Yeah. So, uh, oh, see, well, CJ said he could hear me loud and clear. That's a good mic that I got over here then. So um, let's just dive in to see what's going on. So last week, two of hip hop's longtime enemies decided to put their differences aside and publicly squash their beef. Last Thursday, rappers Gucci Mane and Young Jeezy did a versus battle together after having a 15-year-long robbery that left one of Young Jeezy's associates dead. Did you watch the battle? And if so, what did you think of their reconciliation? Nora. <laughs> there we go. Okay, fine. I'll start. You know, I had to watch Jeezy and Gucci Mane. <laughs> okay, no, I did. I did tune in. I will not uh -oh. sound like I'm this big old hip hop head. And I'm. Do we lose Janor? Oh no! Oh wait! wait. I'm doing no, you see? I can hear and see her fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then it's on my end. Okay, go ahead, Janor. Sorry about that. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah you're I'm about to you talk about knowledge, not everybody here. Okay, okay great. Ahead. Um, so yeah, I tuned in because I, I hate having FOMO, right? I knew the world was going to be watching and the world did watch. What did they say? 9.1 million. It's been the biggest one ever. Um, I only knew a handful of songs and some of the songs I just couldn't get down with because I'm more of a Gladys Knight versus Patti LaBelle than the Gucci Mane and Jeezy. But I am happy to see this rap world be able to come in and, 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 and have a moment of reconciliation that does not involve violence. What I was more than thrilled to see was all those 9.1 million people, both of those brothers out of Atlanta, having the influence of Stacey Abrams to show up and kick things off and talk about the importance of the vote. I mean, we all know what's at stake in Georgia. So to be able to have that type of audience, that those number of people that live there that can make a difference and to infuse some, some action in there that's really going to take us forward, then I'm all about it. Yay, Timbaland. Yay, Swiss Beats. And yay, Jeezy and Gucci Mane. So uh, to give a little backstory so people understand why this was a historic event, it was because 15 or so years ago, Jeezy and Gucci were beefing about a song that they both did together and wanted to put on their albums. 
So Young Jeezy allegedly put a bounty on Gucci Man's uh, necklace. And one of Jeezy Man's associates went to either rob, kill, or kidnap him. And they got into a shootout, a guy named uh, Pookie Loke. And in the process, Jeezy, uh, Gucci Man wound up killing Pookie Loke. So since that day, because Gucci Man believed that young Jeezy put a hit on him and tried to get him killed, they've been beefing for 15 years. And there's been a lot of behind the scenes beef, a lot of behind the scenes street stuff going on with regards to just a lot of unnecessary violence. So for these two men to squash their beef publicly in the midst of in the last year or so, you got guys like King Bond, a young rapper who just got killed in Atlanta. You got everybody knows what happened to Nipsey Hussle. You got a guy like uh, Mo Three out of uh, was it Louisiana or Michigan? I, I, I forgot where Mo. No, Texas, out of Texas. Mo Three out of Texas. And all these guys died through rap beef and rap violence and a bunch of other stuff. So for these two guys to squash it beef publicly to show these younger generations that you can you can you can stop the violence and end the beef and it doesn't have to go to until somebody dies and i think that was more important than the music whatsoever i just think the idea for two black men to squash a generational beef that's that, that's more than a generation it's like 10 years a generation and a half of beef right publicly stop publicly stop their feuding and show these younger guys who are being murdered left and right by by other black men, I think it's I think it's a good thing, and the songs are good. But beyond that, I, I like the I like the sentiment of stop the violence. So uh, legacy said, great yeah. ending to the battle. They were uh, they were even in the same club afterwards. I hope they yep. can influence all of their colleagues to maintain their peace. And I I think that's so that's so important. Um, my biggest thing was I was watching it. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing, but at some point in time, I was a little nervous because I was like, well, are they about to start fighting? And because they, they seemed like they was going at it a little bit. And I was like, uh, what's happening here? Um, oh, so in that so in that middle part, Gucci yeah. Man did a song called Truth, which was a diss song to Young Jeezy and the guy who was Young Jeezy's friend who he kills. Mm -hmm. And in the song, he says, I should dig his body up and send him back to you. He should pretty much, yeah. And he said, and he wrapped that live on air. And then after that, told him, if you send 10 more people to me, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send them back dead. And we smoking on Pookie Loke tonight. So he just was throwing jabs in that little middle section. And it looked like he was about to get, looked like about to get it shaken for a minute. But, yeah, it did. I was like, oh, snap. Like, uh, do I really want to be watching this? I don't want to watch nobody fight. But then I, I realized that they they made up and stuff. And I love the thing about the Stacey Abrams. So all of you guys who are in Georgia, please get out there and vote. It is the most important thing. Uh, it, it's really, really important. The election is not over. So just make sure you guys get out there and vote. And, uh, and what yeah. you're throwing in um, the, the importance of the vote and, and rappers, Ice Cube with his um, plan and wanting Black America to, with his mm -hmm. Black American plan. Now that we know who the candidate, the president elect, oh, and Madam Vice President elect are going to be, um, mm -hmm. and we all know to move any plan forward, you do need the Congress as part of that process. Now that we know that this is at stake, I would love to see Ice Cube as part of this process. In it in Georgia to, to to move that forward if he's really serious about his plan and everybody for that matter that was on the periphery or, or you know all these conversations we've had leading up to the rappers or the black men or or, or or in terms of seeing things happen for the black community it can happen with Congress or the potential is much higher so I would love to see as much participation especially now as we did leading up to this point. And I also want to, ask, I want to add to that, uh, anybody in Georgia, I saw a video and read like an article about it. And I don't know if it's completely true, but I heard people were being taken off the roll call for, so people's names were being taken off. So if you voted, check your status to make sure that you're still on the roll to, and you meet the deadline to be able to uh, vote in January for uh, for the Senate. So, because I wouldn't be surprised if 
they did that. I mean, we're in a country that did hanging chads during Bush and and people uh, doing all sorts of stuff in the last elections. So just make sure that you're on the roll. And if you're if you're a uh, if you're a an ex convict, please make sure that you vote because it's necessary and you can do it now. So. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. just make sure that everybody votes out there because it's, it's a really, really close uh, runoff in both Senate seats. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, Cheryl Campbell said, happy Thanksgiving. Be blessed and grateful. Cheryl Campbell is my mother, everybody. So I had to make hey, happy mother. Thanksgiving to you too. Chrissy's mama! <laughs> All right, so yesterday, if you guys haven't had a chance to see the, haven't had a chance to see it, Comedian Dave Chappelle put out a 18 minute video on his Instagram page, giving us an insight into his relationship with Comedy Central and his sketch comedy series, Chappelle Show. In his video, he explains that even though Chappelle Show continues to be shown on streaming platforms such as HBO Max, Netflix, he is not getting paid and is asking all of his supporters to boycott the show. It's not streaming on Netflix right now, just so you guys know, because he asked them to remove it and they did. So do you agree with his boycott or do you think he's just upset for signing a bad deal? Go ahead, uh, Janora. I was that dude's turn. It's not I can keep going anytime. No, um, I mean, of course he's upset it's a bad deal, but of course he's doing the right thing because it's not even a beef with a person. It is a beef with the system, and this is how you fight the system. So I talked to Dave Chappelle, and it's just a testament to just how, how not just how dope the brother is, but you know, he's had such a long career, how genuine he, he is, how genuine his audience is. I feel like if he was just uh, any other guy, like up and coming kind of, he might not be able to have that kind of clout and that kind of pull for him to, to call up Netflix or tell his audience whatever and the audience go for it. So I think that's a testament to who he is as a human being and a brilliant man. But yes, way to go to tackle the system. And I think more people in his position should be able to and hopefully unite to step up to beat the man. That's the man or that's that's a, a, a segment of the man that we always kind of talk about in this in, in this in this way that isn't necessarily concrete, but this is a chance where it is. And 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 he's he's throwing a blow and, and I hope he feels it. How about you, Abdul? I'm I I'm uh, I like the role reversal in the sense that when he first signed his deal it was Comedy Central who had the leverage because they were the more powerful figure out of the two of them. So they were able to give him a, 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 a shitty deal, which everybody, all the three of us know about the deals that they give out there in this business that are yeah. horrible, especially- your I didn't have a couple of them. Yep, especially first time around, the, the, the points, the credits, the back end money, all that stuff. So then to now for him to be able to, with his, with his own, uh, will i guess get the leverage now because he's he became such a big name for this thing that he's doing now which is speaking truth to power and speaking about injustice in a comical way but speaking about injustice things like that for netflix to take it off that fast because of what he said for people to be really pressuring hbo max to take that off i think something good's gonna come of it and i hope that what this does is that it sets a precedent for other people who are going through these types of issues, because there's a lot of black people, a lot of black people in the film and music industries. Mm -hmm. We have contract problems because of the shicey deals that we get. And I hope this sets a precedent for us to be able to turn those things around, especially in the, in the era of streaming services and them refurbishing old shows and making money off of it. So. I really hope, um, you know, because a lot of my shows that the, the stuff that I guest start on, they're all on different Netflix and they're, they're airing everywhere. And I promise you, sometimes my residuals that I get are like, you know, 24 cents. So there's a lot of bad deals out there. Um, but I just feel like there's a movement that is happening with, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement. Um, you know, the, what Dave Chappelle is doing. I just have a feel a feeling that everything's about to get shaken up, even women fighting uh, to get equal pay in the world, you know, in the film industry and the rest of the business. So 
I just see a movement happening and I, I really hope that it changes soon and uh, especially in my lifetime. So oh, I, I, that. I, yes. I, that I would like to just add on the fact that what we're doing now is pushing back because when you're a content creator and you're creating your own stuff and you can put your own stuff out there, you can actually compete with the networks because if you look at something like the versus battle that we talked about earlier, they had better numbers than the grant than the uh, American Music Awards right. that same night. They had like I think like three million more people than the American Music Awards. So something that two guys built can go up against a big machine. We something that you, I, or any other black person who's creating content can push back against the system. Well, and this is why we created this so that we could talk about the things that we want to talk about and and allow the networks to come after us so that that's the whole goal uh, we're going to introduce our guest coming in but i just want to say tim says the situation happens every day across many industries not just entertainment those who start out uh usually have no leverage god bless him for taking on goliath and that is for real he definitely Absolutely. took on goliath um okay so i'm so super excited because our today's guest is a louisiana actress whose passion for food led her to create spices based on her hometown flavors. So many of you, hold on one second, I wanna make sure that I show a couple of little things here. Many of you know Denise Boutet for her many films and TV series such as Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns and Why Did I Get Married? Uh, let's see, why did I get married? TV One's For the Love of Ruth and Media. Of course, that's what she and I did together, which I was so super excited. And BET's Her Only Choice. But today, Denise is displaying her talents in the world of culinary arts. A self-proclaimed foodie, Denise has added author to her list of accomplishments with the cookbook entitled Southern Modified, alongside Food Network chef, Gennard, Wells and her ever growing list of Louisiana girl products and spices. Everyone, please help me welcome Miss Denise Boutte. Woohoo! What's up? Hey. You know what? I, I kind of just wanted to keep you guys going for a while because this was good. Oh my <laughs> word. Yeah, I'm thank curious. you. I was just like, do I have to interrupt? This is some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we usually tend to talk about things that people want to talk about or whatever's yeah. trending and, and putting a twist on it. I mean, because Abdul is always bringing, you know, this twist of like, well, let me get to you what, what the reasoning and the, right. and the history behind it. And then right. Janora is always coming with the love, but no, we got to change. And I'm always <laughs> smack dab in the middle of like, <laughs> I'm feeling oh the God. love, but we need to make some change. You Just know? like we were talking about. Look, I, I have my saints. Yeah. Right here. But I'm told me, honey. I'm yes. serious. I was just like, are you serious right now? So behind the scenes, right before the show started, we were all on here. And Abdul, uh, so Denise showed her cup, which has a, a New Orleans Saints logo yeah. on it. And Abdul schooled her with what information real quick? I was telling her that during slavery, that symbol, the Fleur de Lis, was branded on the side of the slave's face when they would run away for the first time. So to now have that symbol on a bunch of the sides of black men's faces on football helmets uh, is the reason why I didn't like the team. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. So while they're changing, you know, the Washington Redskins and a couple of other names out there, they should be changing, you know, the New Orleans kind of symbol. But that's I'm not I'm not drinking my name. water no more. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're going to get to you. So. <laughs> Denise and I had the opportunity to work together yes. on a show. Oh, is it up here? No, it's, uh, I didn't put it up. Uh, it's usually up. I always have, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, one of my little posters. But Denise and I had a chance to work on media together, which was amazing. But in the meantime, in between time, Denise, who is this person who loves to cook, who cooked for us one day, decided that she was going to create this cookbook. So can you tell us a little bit about it? And I see we have a little one over there <laughs> who also is on her Instagram, who always does her little cooking and showing us how to use all these spices that Denise came up with. So, so now you know I told this child, Jordan, go in your room and be quiet for a while while mommy does it. Yeah. And here she goes. <laughs> 
So anyway, yes, I'm I'm Weezy Ann, and this is Weezy Junior right here. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Say hello. Hi. Yay. All right, now let mommy do her thing. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us well, a little bit in the kitchen earlier. So I guess she, you know, deserves oh. a little credit. But um, yes, 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 yes. We are here. And um, so tell us a little bit about the Southern Modified right here. You know what? Um, Chef Jannard Wells and I met on the Tom Joyner cruise several years ago. And we just hit it off like he and his wife. And also my husband and I, we just like talked the entire time. And so after talking, we started, you know, coming up with ideas. We sat down, you know, in a special, like a conference room. And we came up with the idea to do a cookbook together. But because he's from Atlanta, we wanted to do something that was a little healthier. So we took old school dishes that everybody knows and like even gumbo, stuff like that. And we made it healthier. And mm -hmm. that was part of the inspiration behind the spices was the conversation with Jannard actually, when he came to the house, he was like, this is good. He was like, what did you use on this salmon? And I was just like, oh, a little something I mixed up. He was like, you need to sell this. And I was just like, no, I was like, I, I want to do pralines, which is something that I was inspired by years ago. I was like, but yeah, to do it, he was like, no, 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 no. I have an FDA certified kitchen in Atlanta. I need this to happen. Like, I want to help you make this happen. And then he told me, he was like, don't get on the shelf with one. I need you to come up with at least three because you have to take up more shelf space in order to get noticed, especially with spices. So Jannard was an inspiration for this whole thing. And so we went back and forth and I, you know, taste tested this thing and came up with something that I'm really proud of. Mm, go ahead, Janora. I know, I know. So he's an awesome guy, a really awesome guy. And he's making big strides, you know, so. I'm sure we'll see Jannard with his own Food Network show really soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, McDuffie, go ahead. Yeah, that's fantastic. And and there's no such thing as a coincidental meeting. No. Of, of no. Lines. And, and shout out to the Tom Joyner morning cruise, man. And and just now cruises in general. But uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, they had to postpone this year. But yeah, I was just like, Dorn, I was just here to party and have some fun, have some drinks. But okay, I'll work. Wait, wait, wait. But let me just say, not only not only did she get, you know, she met she met this man. You know, they came up with this book. But that's also how she got on media too, because I remember you telling me the story that you met um, Kathy, Kathy Hughes. Hughes. Kathy Hughes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you see, yeah. that's what that's what I always say. Nurture those relationships, but don't force it. Because I'll say a majority of the jobs that I have worked, I almost say 70 plus percent are from people who have rehired me. Mm -hmm. So when folks get on set and act a fool, <laughs> I mean, take that into consideration. You know what I'm saying? You just want to go with the flow. You know, like I said, don't create relationships that aren't real and fluid, but you want to make sure that you show up, do your job, you know, treat everybody with respect. And those are the people that come back over and over again. So yeah, I'd met Kathy Hughes and sure enough, when this, uh, she was putting this drama together, here we go. And there were several folks such as Christy who I'd worked with before that were a part of that cast. So we had an amazing time, an amazing time. Yeah, fantastic. Well, getting back, I guess, to your culinary connection on the cruise uh, and, and this amazing book. I can't wait to get my copy. Uh, but in the meantime, as a sneak peek, what's your favorite recipe in there? You know what? I have to go to my nannies. A lot of this is inspired from, from my family members, and that's what it is. I, I tweaked it in order to make it healthier because the spices are all low sodium and all natural. And so she does a smothered okra that is phenomenal. I don't even like okra. Like, honestly, it is slimy. It, to me, it's gross. To me, it's, but honey, when my nanny puts her foot up in that pot, it is delicious. And part of her secret is vinegar. Putting a little vinegar in there in order to get rid of that slime. Yeah, and she cooks it for a long time or whatever, even in the uh, oven. She smothers it and puts it in the oven. So once she puts the the sausage in there and she puts um, her seasoned chicken, I mean it's it's phenomenal. It's delicious. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, 
okra. So you don't you don't have to sell me on the okra part. But, um, <laughs> To, to make non-okra believers a believer in this dish, I can't wait to check it out. That's yeah, great. yeah. But the, the the main thing is to get rid of the slime. But I will not put okra in my gumbo. I just won't. Wait now. I I won't. Oh, well, you no, know, because of the slime. You can cook it out, but to me, it's just like a distraction. There's so many really? other amazing things yeah. you can put into a gumbo because at that point, it has no flavor. It doesn't add anything. So my whole thing is, if it doesn't add anything to the dish, deuces. I, I don't I don't want it, you know. Mm. But I'll tell you a secret. You know, you can take any dish next level. A smoked turkey leg. Oh yes, or, or a ham hock if it's your non healthy version of. Uh... <laughs> you can do that too. I do I do the smoked turkey leg in my in my greens, but this year I did not put it in there. I did not. What? I know it was, you know, to be honest, because I live in a white neighborhood and I just couldn't find one. And I said, well, <laughs> so I just started, you know, doctoring. Okay, yeah, well, you tell me how that turns out because that's to me that that takes it up next level. Yeah, right. yeah. Are you I'm doing Christy. No, no, they, they still gonna be good. I mean, I'm, I've done it like once before, but it's, you know, that's what happens when you live on the white side of town. Like, you know, trying to find it is, is yeah. a little bit difficult. So, I mean, the, the fact that I found greens was a whole nother situation <laughs> there too. So, you know, I was like, ah! oh my God, I got all three of them and I grabbed them all up. So, I was gonna uh, say, was I, it in the frozen section or was fresh? No, they, they were fresh. They were fresh. They were fresh. They were fresh. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Abdul? Uh, I, I don't eat okra stuff. because I had a traumatic experience with it, so I don't eat okra ever. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, but uh, so having written this book and having gone through the process of, of actually written this book, how would you describe traditional black food? Like what? Like what does that entail to you? Maybe not the textbook definition of it, but to you, what is that? What, how would you define that? You know what? I would say that back in the day, we had to improvise. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have um, access to the freshest of ingredients. Um, a lot of times that that's actually um, how gumbo was created. We had to improvise and do what we could with what we had. And nowadays, a lot of those dishes have been taken over and the culture has been a little modified in order for it to be something that was started with us. You know what I'm saying? That's the Cajun versus Creole, you know, situation. But for instance, gumbo, that's what it is. It's a hodgepodge, to use your word. I'm probably not saying it right, but of different things and scraps that we got. You know, so the slaves had, the, um, you know, scraps from the main house, you know, and we took those ingredients and made magic out of it. That's what a gumbo is. You know what I'm saying? And over the years, you know, it was thrown down so much that some other folks wanted to claim it and put their name on it. But that's the essence of gumbo. That's the original way that it was created. You know, so, so that's kind of how a lot of things are, you know, from music to creativity to stuff like that. I mean, we also the, saw the J-Lo uh, dance that was just like Beyonce's, yeah, for the American Music Awards. I don't know if y'all know that. But from the hairstyle to the moves, you know, folks like to be inspired by things that we do. So there's a lot of dishes that are that way. We took nothing and made it into something amazing and um, it got switched up. The credit just, is elsewhere. Just hold on, to add on to that. So because of everything you just said, mm -hmm. do you think food can be culturally appropriated? Is that a thing? Absolutely. Same way. Okay, explain. Absolutely. I mean, it's just it's just everything. We had our we have you know a palate and an ability. I mean, a lot of these dishes actually originated in Africa. Like once you start thinking of it, like there's a um, smothered okra dish. No, a smothered uh, corn dish. We call makshu. Okay, we call it makshu, and it's kind of like a um, you take whole kernel corn. And you take cream style corn, but we take it from the actual corn. That is actually something that they do. I think it's in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things or whatever were taken from another, you know, from the continent, you know, from Africa and taken here and again, modified. Louisiana is a mixture of French and also a lot of Spanish culture. So a lot of the things that are there 
were taken, you know, from the folks that settled there. So a lot of this stuff is not traditional. This is not a U.S. situation. You know, these were other cultures that came and had this melting pot of sorts. And hence the reason why I was like, oh, my God, the food of Louisiana. Well, that's why. Because it's not just one, you know, group of folks or whatever. It's just like a mixture. And that's what, to me, makes it so amazing. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I pulled, I pulled a whole bunch of different oh. stuff from your, you know. Yes. I mean, you over here throwing down. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of those dishes I actually can't take credit for. We had a competition. Mm -hmm. And we had folks actually submit their best Louisiana girl dishes and we gave an award away. And so a lot of those dishes actually came from other folks back home. A lot of the folks or whatever that are really using the product are in Houston. There's a lot of Louisiana folks or whatever that actually migrated to uh, mm -hmm. the Texas area. And most of those dishes came from folks or whatever that entered the competition and uh, from from Texas, from Houston. Oh, okay, was so that because of post Katrina? Was that? I think a lot of that migration was because of post Katrina. A lot of people from Katrina moved to Texas. Part of and it was Louisiana. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And, and here's the deal, which is funny. Whenever I was a kid and we had our relatives from you know Texas coming in, we were just like, oh my god, like we thought they were living high on the hog, like they was rich <laughs> and they were coming to town, they was dressed nice, they was driving cool cars, like. When our folks from Texas were coming in, we were like, ooh, they bougie. Like, we were just like, and loving it, dude, because we're like backwoods and stuff. And so they would come, and they were quite impressive. So there were a lot of us in uh, in the Houston area. But yeah, Katrina definitely was the um, great migration of sorts. OK, so one thing that you always talk about, you're saying that you'll take a dish a traditional dish and put a little twist on it and yes. you'll make it a little more healthier and you're also using your product. So yeah. can you give us an example of something that is traditional, you know, greens or ribs or something? And how do you put that little twist on it? Because people are going to be cooking tomorrow. So maybe, you know, they might want to pick up your spices and be like, hey, let's put a little twist to make it healthier, right? Exactly. Well, here's the sucky part. I very rarely use bacon. I very rarely, I know, I know. And I've gotten on this train of using portobello mushrooms as a substitute for meat. And if you cook it right, it's actually really good. Like it's the texture. It's the texture of it that actually makes it a good substitute. I've even done some things like I hate cauliflower rice. I still hate cauliflower rice, but it's all about texture. So if you're doing like, for instance, uh, um, you know, I mean, that this is not necessarily Louisiana, but if you're doing a pizza and stuff, if you season anything properly, if you get the texture right, over time, your taste buds kind of get fooled and you kind of like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is good. So there's a spin on pretty much any and everything that we eat. Um, but, yeah, I mean, one of the things is, you know, you know so, so, yeah. now don't ask me about tofu because that's nasty. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We ain't doing no tofu. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I, I'm I can't take the y'all too, too far with that one. Yeah, no, that's nasty. And I also like um, zucchini is another good substitute. I mean, if you if you season it properly and, you know, <laughs> plug, plug, plug. But if you season it properly, you know, and personally, I like even more garlic powder than is what's in these bottles. Like I just smother stuff in, you know, um, in garlic powder. And here's another thing. Cook it a long time. Like, don't just like take something and slap it on the plate or whatever. A lot of times you have to let those you know, um, flavors marry. That's one of the reasons why I hate an Instapot. I do not like an Instapot. It's too quick. The flavors don't get married enough or whatever. So sorry, Instapot fans, but that's not, that's not my gig, you know? So as long as you bubble it up and you let those juices and all that stuff, you know, it attain each other in the pot, you can come up with something pretty interesting. I also like um, pork chops and stuff. We don't eat a lot of pork chops and gravy anymore. Like mother pork chops and stuff like that. That used to be our go-to or whatever. But we also we don't we don't eat a lot of that stuff anymore. So just kind of changing it up, you know. 
So right here, uh, Joseph talked about high blood pressure and all that with family reunion, because, you know, we put in a whole bunch of salt. So I know you said yours has a little sodium. Right. Is this good for somebody to use your product if they do have high blood pressure? It is. Now, here's the here's the disclaimer. There is no uh, no salt version. OK, so the, the uh, best that we did or whatever was the um, the low sodium version. And each of these spices have anywhere from 34 to 76 percent less sodium than the other all purpose blends. And I'm, when I say that, I'm talking about the Cajun Creole uh, Louisiana spices. So there's two leading ones and I could say their names right now. One is Tony Sachery's, one is Slap Your Mama. So if you compare their original spices to these that's how much how much less salt you'll get and again it's all natural you're not getting any weird stuff in there you can pronounce every single thing every ingredient that's on the label hmm. okay. yeah so uh Go ahead. you got it janor yeah because I, I i'd love to continue this conversation um about seasonings and your special blends to these because i'm a slap your mama fan i mean actually if if, if i could say so myself i yeah. I am sometimes from Louisiana, baby. I mean, that was probably horrible. But the point is, <laughs> New Orleans, I, one of my favorite times in my life. And yeah. uh, part part of that is the food. And yeah. I do my own crab boil version. Uh, and I do you slap your mama, but I do know I'm okay. also pushing the, the, the sodium and, and looking forward yeah. to finding more uh, or just better options. Right. So the current option I use, I would rather use an independent option that looks like you. So, um, well, that said, you know what? Here's the deal. Again, like I was saying, if you have the right stuff to marry there, you don't really miss it. And so, like, for instance, instead of black pepper, which is not as healthy for you, there's a chipotle. I use chipotle. I do not use black pepper in anything. Yeah. Uh, smoked chipotle has this, um, again, this smokiness, this earthiness that to me, you don't need the black pepper. Um, there's a, now here's the deal though. Here's the other thing that separates it. There's a tinge of sugar in there. A lot of times if you marry the savory with a tinge of sugar, that's the thing that's like, hmm, what's different about this? Every single thing that's savory, I always take a little bit of sugar in there. With this, you don't have to. So it just gives you that little something like, this is different, you know? So between the smoked chipotle and the little dash of sugar, you'll definitely notice a difference. So you don't have to really worry about the salt because your ingredients are compensating with a better fra uh, flavor profile than what you used to. That's great. Can you just quickly go through each of the different seasonings that you have? Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. So this is the OG right here. This is a uh, uh, Louisiana girl, low sodium. Okay, here she comes again. Mm -hmm. This is <laughs> the um, hot and spicy right here. Oh, I can't show the label right. Oh, let me tell you something though. I think it's too much lighting on it. So I had my photo on this thing. Here comes little miss thing that says, well, I am Louisiana girl. So how about you put my picture? So I got replaced by my own kid. So, yeah, I'm not very happy about that. But anyway, this right here is the original right here. And this right here is the cinnamon sugar. So along with the savories, we got a little sweet for you because this is something that she can. Do you want to say it? Well, um, so I guess I guess don't bother. So um, um, one time um, I was um, I like to eat cinnamon toast a lot. So my mom was like, oh, why not make a cinnamon sugar? And that's how this came. Yeah. Oh, okay, I was so I was shaking on cinnamon and sugar, and she was just like, "Oh, what?" I was like, "That's a pretty good idea." So, voila. Okay, can you explain? Uh, can you give examples of what you would use those different products for? You know, like because mm -hmm. I just use I use Lowry salt and garlic and black pepper. So, sh show me how I can use all four of those products on different, you know, different dishes. Okay, so a lot of times on my salmon and my seed, here's the deal. To me, like one of the biggest, like <laughs> one of the most amazing things to use it on, seafood. Seafood, period. So, Janora, you were saying that you love your crab legs and stuff like that. So after those are done and boiled, go ahead and sprinkle a little a bit of this on there. The beauty of 
any spice, whatever you're doing shrimp, when you're doing crab, whatever you're doing crawfish, you want to sprinkle a little bit of that spice on there because when you crack it and it's on your fingers, that'll give you an extra bit of seasoning. So don't just count on the stuff that's, you know, you put in the pot to season it. You always want to take a little something, you know, and sprinkle it on top. Mm. So that's something with your seafood. Make sure you keep that in mind. Um, personally, again, a, a salmon, I love anything seafood. Um, when you want to take it up a notch, though, this hot and spicy is serious. So there's some serious chipotle pepper in here. So if you got that green, like for instance, Christy, you were saying your greens and stuff, this throws down on some greens. Like what? this is amazing. Yes, yes. And then with regards to like, say, cinnamon sugar, pies. Like a lot of times people want to put a little something on the rim of their glasses when you know they're trying to get their little drink on. Uh -huh. So that's an awesome thing for that. Um, any kind of cookies? Pie, pies are not disgusting. <laughs> so anyway, whenever you like want to put it on the top of cookies, um, there's a lot of, oh, her oatmeal. A lot of times with her oatmeal. Yeah, not anymore. No. Okay, you know what? Bye, Jordan. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that to me is what um, the cinnamon sugar, you know, uh, apple pie. A lot of people are making pies and stuff this weekend. That's one of the good things about it. Oh, and let me tell you something. I was doing a show this week, um, Cooking with Marilyn, and I was introduced to something called, and I'm going to say this wrong, pastelon. Pastel, P-A-S-T-E-L-O-N. And it's the savory and a, um, what do you call it? Sweet dish because you use plantain, Abdul, is this right? Okay. Plantain. Plantain. And I'm used to using, like, I was like, this is a banana. She was like, no, 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 it's not a banana. She was like, you want to get it super ripe. So hence the reason it looks like, um, like it's, you know, not to be used. But anyway, we slice those suckers we did a mixture of, um, what do you call it? Ground beef. And she also suggested, which I do a lot too, breakfast sausage. So a lot of times to your ground meat, if you add a little breakfast sausage in there, that'll take it up a notch too. And so we did it and we lined like the top of it. We did layers as if it was a, a lasagna. And when I tell you it was one of the best things I've ever eaten. So for Thanksgiving tomorrow, that's what I'm doing. Not necessarily traditional dishes. That's why I was telling you, Christy, I've got the brine going, you know, for the chicken. We're going to put it on the grill. Um, I'm doing stuffed mushrooms. I also try to put um, spinach in everything. I try to put spinach in it. If it's possible, I'll put that in there. And I'm going to do uh, stuffed mushrooms. I got some portobello mushrooms. And um, I'm going to do some rice dressing. Now, a lot of times people call this dirty rice. That's the sin. Don't call it dirty rice. Just call it rice dressing. <laughs> and that's one of the things I also put uh, breakfast sausage, sausage in. Mm. So, okay. I know Abdul. Today. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. I know Abdul wanted to say something. And then we'll, we'll jump so, in. So uh, a lot of uh, traditional Black African-American cooking uh, is a lot of, uh, because of sharecropping and the long work days, sort of crock pot, slow as you go, slow heat sort of cooking. But modern day traditional cooking is sort of 30 minutes or less. So in your cookbook, do you have a variation of both of them or do you just have, like what in your cookbook, what kind is it for long cooking or for something short and sweet? You know what? I have a little bit of everything. Um, I love a crock pot. I love a crock pot. So anytime I do, in fact, I have a section called uh, slow cooker faves. And I've got a rotisserie tortilla soup with chipotle, uh, split pea soup, um, slow cooker style, and a camera ready cabbage uh, cleanse. So a lot of times when I got to get on camera and do a job, I eat this for two weeks. I eat this for two weeks and it's straight up just this soup. OK, and I, that's another something that I put into the slow cooker. But it's a mixture of veggies and um, cabbage. And again, it's one of those items that when you slow cook it, you can't even tell. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whatever it is, that's the only thing that I eat. So I do that for two weeks and get to where I need to go. I so, need that um, right now. And I don't, I don't even have a job, but go ahead. I, girl, let me tell you, this thing will get you, you know, if you got a little pooch pooch or something, you know, there's only so much that I, um, you know, Spanx can do. So a lot of times I do that. Um, oh, 
the signatures, I have those in here too. I have a Louisiana Girl gumbo. I have a, a pot pie. I have a pot pie. Um, shrimp Creole. You guys heard of shrimp Creole? Yeah. You ever tried shrimp Creole? Okay. Well, this one is the bomb. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, my nanny Risa smoked uh, okra and my mom's uh, cabbage rolls. Those are so good. So whatever it is I cook, even that main dish, somehow I try to incorporate those veggies. And, um, oh, the, the chicken pot pie, I just made that the other day or whatever. You can actually use cauliflower as opposed to the regular flour, you know, um, covering and stuff. You can actually use a ca uh, um, cauliflower version of that. Yeah, that's yeah. taking it a little bit far. It's taking it far, but I'm telling you, it actually works. It actually works. So, you know, there's a little bit, like I said, of everything. Oh, and I have another hack for you. Whenever you're doing stuff like, for instance, the uh, tortilla soup, anything that calls for chicken, always go, I'm going to plug it, Costco is the bomb. Get one of those rotisserie chickens and use that instead. There's no reason to recreate the wheel. Any single thing that you need, because to me, breast meat is dry. Okay, unless you cook it perfectly, it's dry. Okay, not this chicken I'm cooking, you know, for tomorrow. But I love to use rotisserie chicken. Save yourself some time, you know? And so for my pot pie and my salads, and if I'm going to put something in a tortilla, whatever it is, I always take that chicken, I dismantle that sucker, and I put it in the dish. So there's always, you know, a way around it. You were talking about weeknight, you know, dinners, because, you know, we don't have time to do all that. That's a great way to just make it quick. We don't always have time for a crock pot, you know, 12 hours plus. So sometimes you just got to make it happen. So those rotisserie chickens, get that sucker in there. And I get like about one a week to have it like in the uh, the refrigerator. Yeah, are your are your spices, you know, local or do, do we have to order them um, on your website? So the website is how you're going to get it, you know, anywhere, you know, in the U.S., but Locally speaking, my sister-in-law, Shana, is actually the um, marketing director for the Southwest region of Louisiana, but we ship or whatever. So she's in the New Iberia era, area. We call it a parish. So she's in New Iberia Parish, but she handles uh, Lafayette, Vermilion, you know, all those areas. And so she'll either deliver in person or she will uh, sell direct. And we also have five local grocery stores that we're in and um, it's called New News Girl. So New News, <laughs> New News, which is our biggest, biggest storefront, they have it. And we have something called counter boxes, you know, because out of branding, we are in different little areas. And what she'll do is she'll ref uh, refill those counter boxes. So that's really cool because you don't want to be in just one location. You want folks to go and say, I've seen that. You know, I've seen this. Oh, this must be good. You know, if I keep seeing this thing, it must be pretty awesome. So that's one of the uh, things we're doing. And um, 2021, we're going to start with the uh, pecan candy, the pralines. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. we're going to have limited orders. We're going to have, you know, a small batch or whatever, but we're going to limit it. But we're going to take the next step and uh, get those out to folks, too. So that's going to be a first come, first serve type of situation. But well. yeah, yeah. And eventually we'd like to go to heat and eat, you know, to heat and eat type stuff, pop it in the oven. You don't have time or whatever. And you just, you know, you got your um, your carb, you got your meat, you got your sauce, you throw it in there, throw in the microwave or, or the oven and just voila have your meal so, so joseph said i can't wait to move back home next week i'm over here in tears just listening to denise talk about seasoning hey god bless your family <laughs> <laughs> and she got me she uh just throw in a baby bib for the boy i like that too Can we say, another good one absolutely yes, absolutely. yes. Uh, hey, crew, thanks for always bringing great content. Pralines, yes, Kendra said. Hey, I think we got a, we got a winner right there already. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, we're going to be, you know, wrapping up soon. I didn't realize this time is going by so fast already because there's so many things I want to ask. Um, Janora, Abdul, is there any last thing you want to get in to ask? I mean, I got a few more things, but I know we're running out of time, so I'll just narrow it on down. Uh, hello, Kimberly and Kendra, thank you for joining. I love you both. Um, that's that's my folks back home. Uh, 
That's family. Uh, that's family. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you talked about some staples. So now we got this, your, your seasonings as a staple in our cupboard. You talk about loving to throw in always uh, spinach when you get a chance. Absolutely. Uh, I, I know um, Abdul originally brought up the, the, the crock pot. You second that you love it. What else do we need in our kitchen? What is a staple for somebody who's just like, all right, quarantine made me have to cook. So now it's not so bad. What are some things that need to stay in my kitchen, whether it's a kitchen tool or another something in your refrigerator that you hadn't mentioned yet? Okay, so I will give you a tool because okay. I fall in love with it. And other than a crock pot, all this stuff is just like, you know, hype to me. Um, I returned my, um, what do you call it? My, uh, it's like a pressure cooker though. You know what I'm saying? That's what an Instapot is. It's like a pressure cooker. And to me, like if you put meat in there without browning it first, even if you put it in any kind of like liquid, it's like white. I'm mm -hmm. like, I ain't eating that. Okay. But here's the deal. What is worth the hype is an air fryer. Really? An air fryer. I was going to buy one yesterday, but now I'm like, I used to know which one to get. Black, Black Friday sales and holiday sales. And, oh my God, it is amazing. Now here's the deal with an air fryer. Sometimes it's kind of deceptive because unless you put a whole lot of panko on there, sometimes you don't want all that crispness. You know what I'm saying? So you got to watch how you use it. But the more you use it, the more you'll figure out what it's best for. Dude, I made some potato chips because I'm a potato chip, like I'm addicted, right? And so I sliced them really thin. I put them in there because I was like, this ain't going to work. It was good. But a lot of things, unless you put that panko on it, don't expect it to be, you know, fried per se. It's not going to give you quite the same thing. But what it does do is a mess. Dude, I'll put some catfish up in there. No, no sir. And it was not dry. It was phenomenal. I'm okay. Done. And do it. It'll cook it in 15 minutes. Like the maximum you have to cook your food for it is 15 minutes. And the directions are pretty on point. Like if you stick to it, always think I know better than the, you know, the recipe. Don't go too far. Like it really is. It's, it's phenomenal. I even did like some chicken wings, you know, one day. Um, what else did I put in that sucker? Uh, uh, oh, the mushrooms. I, I actually did a version of the stuff mushrooms in there phenomenal how long how long did the the did the um the uh you just said chicken wings how long did that take 15 minutes now they weren't huge they weren't huge but what you do is you put it in there and you have to flip it mm -hmm. so everything that you're going to put in there you have to make sure that you flip it halfway through but yeah i mean they weren't super thick but that and then i tossed it in a little barbecue sauce it was amazing Okay, you you sold me on that one. Abdul, I'm did you serious. have something? That yeah, air fryer is serious. Oh, and shrimp. Oh, my God. I mean, now, mind you, like I said, the, the Louisiana girl on there, don't put anything on your shrimp. Put that sucker in the air fryer. Shrimp cooks like that. You make sure that you do that little butterfly situation on the back, and it is amazing. Do you put your seasoning on first and then put it in the air fryer? I do. Is that what you do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So I'll always use a little grapeseed oil. Don't cook with olive oil. Why is that? It's a carcinogen. If you heat olive, olive oil is meant for dressings. I found this out. And I mean, this wonderful woman wow. that, you know, she's a vegan and she's a clean eater. She said, do not cook with olive oil. Whenever you heat it, it becomes a carcinogen. Grapeseed. She told me another one, but now all I use is grapeseed. And if you notice, grapeseed will burn a lot slower than olive oil. It's not meant to be cooked with necessarily. So coat it in some grapeseed. Make sure that you put that Louisiana girl on there. But always make sure that you put a little grapeseed also on that um, in the basket. There's a little thing that you put on there. I forgot what you call it, but it's a little holder. Make sure you put that grapeseed on there because you don't want it to stick. It's mm. supposed to be nonstick, but you want to put a little coating on there. And it's 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 phenomenal. I can't say enough. I know. I've been cooking with olive oil for I don't know how long, thinking that it was uh, good for you. So. Same thing here. Same thing here. I just changed that about like four or five months ago. I was yeah. like, oh, what? Oh hell no! Go ahead, Abdul. No. I know, I know. We kept going. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I actually fried chicken with truffle oil once, and that's with a whole nother ordeal. But uh, so for anyone, 
Uh, I don't know because I got it as a gift. So I got a bottle about that big as like like a huge bottle of it as a gift. And then I went to Dean and DeLuca to try to get it again. It was like $200. So anyway, but it was, it was all right. Oh, but uh, right. So to anyone wanting to buy your books or your spices to give someone as a Christmas gift because of the, uh, because of Corona and everything else, is there like, should they do it two weeks in advance? Is there a time limit that, so they'll be able to get it in enough time to package it and give it as a gift to their family? You know what? Usually it takes about three days. Again, that's like uh, bearing the whole holiday situation or for you to get your uh, spices. And that, again, is on WeZianaGirl.com. The book, however, is sold on Amazon. So if you go to the website and you want the book, it'll immediately transfer you to Amazon. So that's where you can get the uh, the book is on there. So um, and this was this was self-published. Like, you know, Janart and I didn't go to somebody to do this. I mean, and that just shows you, like you're saying, you know, Christy, don't wait on somebody to give you an opportunity. Create your own. You know what I'm saying? There's everybody. I mean, there's folks that got makeup and this. I'm just like, don't you have enough makeup lines? If you brand it and you promote it, I mean, social media is the best vehicle. I was in advertising for almost five years in Dallas. There is nothing like social media if you're diligent. And I'm, I'm, I'm slapping myself on the hand because I could do way better. But if you push this and promote this, I mean, the right way, it's it's it'll take you next level. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So everything is available on the website. We are having a sale on the spices. Um, if you buy two of any combination, you get one low sodium free. So I know everybody's got a New Year's resolution coming up so you can start early. And if you buy two of anything, any of these combos, you get one low sodium free. Okay, I love it. We want to thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Oh, my pleasure. My and, pleasure. Uh, you guys can check media is still on TV One Aaron somewhere out Ooh. there that we can. Um, Real quick, is there anything we can catch you on right now? Are you working on anything coming up we can help promote? Two things. Uh, one is coming out on BET. I uh, just heard um, on Valentine's Day. And um, it's called Never and Again. So that's going to be on BET on uh, February 14th. I was like, when is Valentine's Day? So that's going to be awesome. And I'm actually working on, we're in pre-production on a movie in Louisiana. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, we'll make and sure Louisiana. we we'll, we'll pro, uh, promote it on the show. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, uh, yes, Joseph, she is going to be selling pralines in the first of the year. Yep. Monica said she is buying her spices and book right now. Oh, so, you, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> Monica and I go way back. Um, we want to do our BPS person of the week real quick. Uh, Denise, mm -hmm. what we do is we honor a person in the community who is doing something wonderful, lovely, that is help promoting the community in some way, shape, or form. So our BPS person of the week is a seven-year-old Maryland boy who turned bullying into helping others. As a second grader, Cabinot Bell wanted to take the dark feelings he felt and turn them into love and positivity. So with the help from his mother, he started a GoFundMe page to help give back to his community in Maryland. It's uh, Gatherburn. So he began creating care packages with toiletries and groceries for the elderly people in his community Aww. using his own savings, birthday and Christmas money. So his own savings, birthday and Christmas money. Eventually, fueled by donations, Cabinot and his mother opened up a food pantry in a warehouse that a local Aww. logistics company allowed him allowed them to use today with his food pantry thriving Cavanaugh has shifted his efforts to help in Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South uh, South Dakota home of some of the poorest communities in America he said he settled on Pine Ridge after he and his mother took a trip to Mount Rushmore two years earlier and was shocked by the poverty as they drove through the reservation now with the help of his GoFundMe page and Amazon wish list, he was oh. able to deliver $20,000 worth of food, what? hygiene products, and cleaning supplies to uh, Pine Ridge and said, I want to do more stuff to make them happy. So, Cabinot Bell, 
for your love oh, Mary, uh, and willingness to turn a dark moment for you into a positive life for so many others. You are our BPS person of the week. I'm Christy Fair, this week in Black People Shit. So, he was bullied yeah. and he had to do this, which I think is such a wonderful situation. Um, and before we leave, you guys, we want to say again, um, thank you for joining us every single week. We thank you, Denise Boutte, for coming on. My pleasure. Uh, My pleasure. We love, love talking to you guys every single week, and we'll be taking, uh, but we will be taking a few weeks off for the holidays. But please set your calendar and reminders to Wednesday, December 23rd, when we will be doing our BPS holiday special, Christmas. Never before. <laughs> so, before we go, we just wanted to take a moment for each of us to say a few words about what we're thankful for, especially during these times um, that we've all kind of faced this year. So, um, Abdul, I'll start with, actually, I'll start with you, Denise. Um, what are you thankful for? You know what? All these uh, months cooped up in the house, um, you know, everybody took it as, oh, my God, you know, I'm stranded into my own home. But it was a chance to kind of sit back and regroup and rethink. And, you know, it's all about how you look at things and the silver lining. So that was pretty awesome. And reconnecting, you know, with even my little girl, it was um, homeschooling was up something. But she's getting it to an age where it really um, allowed me to see the little you know young lady that she's developing into um so that was pretty awesome and yay joe biden yeah for you i'm not gonna talk about my hate for those two but uh so there's a there is a uh there is a Arabic proverb that says, uh, you plan, but God plans better. So even though this year has been hard for a lot of us, I'm thankful to God just for his presence in, in my life and, and the abilities and things that my family, my father, of course, and all my brothers and sisters, uh, my friends, just the fact that it's being healthy and not having COVID and things looking up in the right direction for for, for, for a lot of things. So, but, but mostly I'm thankful to God just because God is God. So. Mm. And if you guys are out there watching, if you guys want to put in the chat what you're thankful for, we would love to see that right mm. now. Uh, so, Janora, what are you thankful for? Oh, so many things. We got another hour or two uh, for the show. Uh, just immediately thankful for you, Denise. Um, I, of course, am familiar with your work, but I've never had a chance to meet you and um, I know a lot of times we never know who a, a personality will be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it, you're just a breath of fresh air and such a lovely soul. And mm -hmm. so what a yeah. to connect with you in this way. So God bless you, thankful for you. And not mm -hmm. only you just being a great uh, person or human in this world, but a badass boss bitch. You better be that <laughs> entrepreneur with not just your own crisis, but it just sounds like, um, you're just at the beginning of, of building your empire. So Godspeed to you. Um, thankful for you, Christy, and even you, Abdul. Uh, <laughs> both created something fantastic, and I am so blessed and honored to that you all asked me to be part of the second season on this journey. And so what a blessing to be able to at least be a respite uh, one day a week where people can find and get something good in their life. So what a blessing to be part of that. So grateful for that. Of course, always grateful for my family and for their health um, and and for them showing up, not just my blood family, but my friend family, sister girl family that uh, show up to support and show love. And uh, family here in California, I things could be so different in so many ways, but I am blessed to have a roof over my head, love in my house. Uh, with my wife, as well as even my in-laws down the street that I'm going to spend time with tomorrow. So 
So, so many blessings again. My time is up now. I know. <laughs> but I can go on and on. And, and I think the times where I do get sad or down, which happens because life is life and we are human, uh, coming back to what we are grateful for is always a, the, the first way to just be picked back up and back in the game. So thank you for this opportunity to, to be able to, uh, to share. Um, and I'll close it out with, um, you know, with everything that's going on, the fear and all that that was happening in the world and the friends who lost friends who have died um, hmm. to COVID or to cancer or whatever this year. Um, I'm actually really grateful for the downtime. I think this is the first time and since I've started my career that I actually had the opportunity to just sit with myself. In the beginning, it was a little challenging because I was just like, oh my God, because it was more fear-based. But being able to take that time to figure out who Christy was, um, it helped me to create the show, which I'm so grateful first to Abdul because I was like, Abdul, this is what I want to do. Like, what do you think? And he was like, let's do it. And then, you know, we asked Janora to be a guest and she was like, well, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. And I was like, well, great. So I'm grateful for the two of you uh, just for being here. But I'm also grateful for the growth that I've had of doing, stepping into something that I normally don't do, which is the producing side of the show. And directing i'd never really directed on camera so i'm not going to go on and on but um i'm and i'm grateful that i'm healthy i'm grateful that my, mm -hmm. my my family is healthy you know so i thank all of you guys for watching every single week we thank you for being here um it's, it's so amazing to have this platform to be able to to express how we really feel um and um We'll see you guys in three weeks. Make sure that you come back and then we'll see you guys in the new year after that. So, oh yes, I'm definitely thankful for a new president. All right, you guys, again, Denise, thank you for, for chiming in. Uh, make sure you like and share this episode and we'll see you guys in three weeks on the 23rd. You guys have a good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.